Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Dr. Harsh Chaturvedi representing the Medical Affairs and Clinical Research of Pulse Pharmaceuticals. Uh, on behalf of my organization, I welcome you to this uh, very interesting international speaker program, which we call tete -tete, uh, dealing with osteoarthritis. Uh, to tell you uh, briefly, uh, we are, as I mentioned, Pulse Pharmaceutical is a Hyderabad-based company. Uh, which uh, is innovation driven and uh, some of you are aware that we are also at the forefront of uh, nano pharmaceutical development. We especially exploit the limitations in the pharmacokinetic profiles of the available molecules or drugs as you would like to call it and we try to Generally, we try to improve the absorption and thereby the bioavailability of these, uh, these, these drugs or the molecules. At times, uh, we also try uh, or attempt to overcoming challenges uh, of the side effects or the toxicities with these existing molecules. Talking about, uh, since I've mentioned it, so talking about uh, the toxicity today's program, as I said earlier, it deals with osteoarthritis, where uh, we have an array of uh, drugs available for uh, treatment, and they do tend to afford a significant clinical benefit. But the use of these drugs, uh, especially the long-term use of these drugs, is often fraught with its own dangers, and uh, which makes us a bit skeptical uh, about the duration of the prescriptions. We know uh, there are NSAIDs, we know when we look at the Western world, uh, there are pain issues, they are more about opioids and OPH and uh, those kinds of things, but we, here we still have more of NSAIDs and paracetamol and a few other agents. But the fact of the matter is when we look at them, uh, the first things which come to our mind are hepatotoxicities, gastrointestinal issues, respiratory issues, and uh, yes, certainly constipation and uh, nausea, and to add to that uh, further renal complications which manifest with them. So there is a large scope uh, for adding uh, therapies, treatments, drugs, whatever you like to call it, which are uh, effic not only efficacious, but also uh, are proven over a period of time to be safer in the use and especially the long, longer term use. Uh, so to learn about uh, one such combination that we have in knee flax, uh, we have uh, two very learned gentlemen with us. Uh, one is Mr. Roger Sabata, who is uh, uh, from Bioiberica, Spain. And he'll be talking about two very special ingredients in knee flax. Uh, that is covalent N2 and uh, covalent, sorry, covalent N2 and the mobility. And subsequently, uh, will be taken by uh, Dr. S. S. Mohanty of KM Hospital, Mumbai, uh, through his deliberations on challenging case studies in osteoarthritis management. Since I have briefly uh, talked about them, uh, I would also I also have a detailed uh, introduction to them, and uh, it's customary to introduce the speaker. So I'll be taking another few minutes to introduce them and introduce the program to you. I'm unable to I'm hear. Unable to hear. Doctor Harsh. Doctor Harsh. You are mute. You are mute. Yeah, yeah. You have to unmute. Yeah. We couldn't hear you. We couldn't hear you.
No, from my end, it's all right. I'm not on mute. Can you hear me, Roger? Yeah, yeah right now. Can. Yes, okay. Yeah, right now. Okay, okay, fair enough. So I'll uh, uh, do it again. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, it was my uh, a problem at my end. Okay. I hope you can see my slides. Not yet. Yeah, they are visible. No, no, not yet. Yeah, you have to stop share and share it again. Yeah, I did that. I don't know why is it. Uh, anyways, uh, so I, I have introduced uh, the two speakers that we have with us uh, in Professor S. S. Mohanty from KM Hospital, who will be talking to us about challenging case studies in osteoarthritis management. But before we go on, ladies and gentlemen, to Dr. Mohanty, we would love to hear, as I mentioned earlier, from uh, Mr. Roger Sabata about the two very important ingredients in uh, the Neflix, which have we recently introduced in the market. And his emphasis of his talk will be on the efficacy and the safety of Colavent N2 and Mobili. With these words, uh, I thank you again for joining us and I hand over to Mr. Roger Sabata to start his presentation. It is over to you, Roger. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Harj. Uh, let me uh, share my screen. Uh, please uh, let me know if you can see it well. Uh, yes, I we can. So. yes, we can. Good, good. So, uh, well, the, the first ingredient that, that I would like to talk that is part of the Neflex product is uh, is Colavant N2. And, and Colavant N2 is a, what we call a native collagen, which is under nature. Um, well, uh, you know that in most of the tissues of the body, there are collagen fiber, fibers. So there are many types of collagen. There are 26 different types. So the, 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 the collagen type that we find in the joints uh, is mainly the collagen type two eh? in, in around a 95%. So, uh, well, and, and then um, there are a lot of products in the market that they have hydrolyzed collagen, which is collagen, but with those long, uh, mm, chains of, of collagen broken in little pieces. So the difference here, the native collagen is not hydrolyzed, but also maintains the triple helix um, structure. So the native structure of the collagen. Eh? This is important because what we are looking uh, for to, to do uh, for this ingredient is to uh, is for an interaction with the cells of the immune system that we can find in the eastern intestine. So, um, well, uh, um, through the administration of uh, native collagen type two orally, uh, we're looking for a for an immune modulation. Yeah? Um, why it's important to modulate the immune system in, in cases of osteoarthritis, uh, for example, because, uh, you know, as you can see, this is a draw of the of the joint uh, when there is osteoarthritis. I mean, uh, the, the, the cartilage is thinned and degraded. And, and because there is this degradation in the cartilage, uh, there are cartilage fragments that uh, they are left within the synovial fluid eh? in, the, in that area. Th those fragments of, of collagen type 2 are identified by the immune system as potentially harmful substances. So that's why the immune system, in that case, the, the lymphocytes T, the T cells, you know, are attacking that collagen type 2. Eh? And they are not only attacking the, the, the fragments found in the synovial fluid, no then the immune system is also attacking the collagen type 2, you know, in the, the cartilage that is still healthy attached to the subchondral bone. And, 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 and this is what it makes further cartilage damage 
to, to, the, to the joint and, and the progression of the osteoarthritis is quite faster. Um, in, the, in this other image, uh, probably it can be seen a little bit better, you know, so that, that there's this, this degradation of the cartilage, those fragments of collagen type 2 are the ones that are identified as potentially harmful by the, the T-cells. And those T-cells, you know, they initiate, you know, an immune response. Eh? And this immune response increases degradation of the cartilage and increases the inflammation uh, of, the, of the joint, not the cartilage because that, that, uh, there are no um, there, there's no blood vessels or no nerves in the cartilage, but the inflammation is in the synovial membrane. Eh? That's why it's so important to reduce the the, the synovitis eh, of the joint in order to reduce pain and reduce degradation. So, uh, well, uh, that mechanism of the oral tolerance. Um, well, uh, the, the rationale is that giving low doses orally, you know, uh, and after a regular administration makes the body recognize this substance as a non-harmful, harmful, sorry. Uh, in that case, we're talking about the native collagen or, or, or the brand, which is called the, the collagen M2. So uh, once though this native collagen has arrived to the gut to the intestines you know enough times in order to be recognized then the immune system uh, stops attacking the cartilage eh, and prevents further cartilage destruction so um well i know that that this seems a little bit strange because you know i mean uh, the recognition of the molecule is in the intestine and then how how does it affect the, the joint, right? So, but but well, in the uh, what, what do we what do we have in the in the intestine uh, is the the um, the Peyer's patches, which is uh, is a, a lymphatic nodule, yeah, a lymphoid nodule of the of the immune system. So those uh, those cells in the small part of the intestine um, are able to recognize you know, uh, different types of substances. Uh, in that case, the native collagen type 2. That's why it's very important the, to have the collagen in the native structure, that triple helix, because what we're looking for forward is for that interaction of the native form uh, with the Payer patch cells. Eh? Like this, they can inform that exactly that kind of molecule of collagen type 2 that the immune system can find in different parts of the body, in that case, in the joints, is not uh, an exogenous substance and it does not have to be attacked. Eh? Uh, in that case, the well, when there's this interaction in the payer's patches, there's a further release of inhibitory cytokines like interleukin 10 and THF beta. And, and those substances are finally the ones that are turning off the immune response, immune response you know, reducing inflammation like this. Um, in, in more detail, uh, these, um, these oral uh, tolerance so it's going through those lymphoid nodules that that, that i i told you before um through those uh, lymphoid nodules um well uh what uh, what do they have is that they um no, i'm sorry <clears throat> uh they turn off the t-cell attack to the endogenous type 2 uh collagen this happens uh through the dendritic cells first so so those dendritic cells that uh, they are connected to the the, the payers patches they uh interact with t cells you know creating those regulatory t cells you know that, that they are the responsibles of uh synthesizing this interleukin 10 and thf beta that uh they are uh, in, in other 
lymphoid tissues, you know, uh, they are going throughout the body. Eh? That's how, you know, these uh, cells of the immune system can get to the joints. Um, well, um, uh, Colaman M2, it's a, it's a very safe product that we have seen in, in, in clinical trials, but also we have seen the efficacy in two different clinical studies. You know, also we are preparing more studies with more patients, but in those two clinical studies, uh, they have been performed with patients with osteoarthritis. And, and also there's a very interesting preclinical study with an animal model of OA that has shown how uh, colaban can prevent cartilage destruction. So I, I'm going to start with the, with the animal model. I know that 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 uh, you doctors, you know, uh, you, you prefer studies with with uh, humans, but sometimes you know the things that you want to to show they cannot be performed in in humans eh? because it, it, it wouldn't be ethical. So in that case, that's why we use that. Uh, animal model that which is a, a rabbit model of osteoarthritis we, we use that that model because the the um, the joint of the rabbit is quite similar to the human uh, joint so um, in that case uh, there were three different treatments like a placebo no treatment a treatment with chondroitin sulfate glucosamine plus hyaluronic acid which it which was a, a product that we had in Bioiberica. And, and then we wanted to add colorant M2 to that mix of, of, of ingredients, eh? chondroitin sulfate, glucosamine, and hyaluronic acid. And we wanted to see, you know, if uh, there was uh, a, a difference, no, a clinically uh, significant difference. So um, in that case, in, in that uh, rabbit model, uh, what it's done is a, a surgery of the anterior uh, anterior uh, cruciate uh, ligament. So uh, that, that section of the ligament, you know, uh, leads to a rapid progression of osteoarthritis. So um, after giving, you know, the products during three months, what we saw is that in the, in the control group, there was a, a, a very fast progression, a very mm, uh, wide destruction of the cartilage. Uh, and, and then in the other two groups, you know, the degradation was much less. Then in the, in the, the group without Colaban, uh, there was a still degradation, eh? that there were uh, areas with, um, with redness and, and, and you can see the, the, the degradation itself of the cartilage. It was not as degrade, degraded or, 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 or like the placebo group. But then if we compare to the group that we added the colaban, here we only can see some reddish areas without cartilage degradation yet after three months, three months. And, and well, and this was very uh, visual, you know, and like this, we could see how colaban, you know, help the other chondroprotector molecules to uh, protect that degradation of the cartilage. So in those uh, other trials that I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about now, uh, those have been performing in, in humans. So uh, in that case, uh, that study of three months uh, was performed in uh, 39 patients with NeoA. And those patients had a Kelvin and Lawrence score of two or three. So, so it was a moderate to severe knee pain. Um, well, th there was uh, there were uh, two uh, treatment groups. One group with taking like the colaban uh, and two plus uh, acetaminophen, and the second group just acetaminophen. Eh? Acetaminophen, you know that it, that well, it, it's a product, it's a drug that helps reducing pain, but is but the, the anti-inflammatory effect is very low. So here we were looking for an addition of effect of this of the colon that could help you know reducing degradation and thus you know inflammation so uh what we saw was was quite interesting you know because uh, regarding knee function you know that there was a an increase of, of the of the i'm sorry of the the, the womac uh function uh, subscale you know compared to 
the acetaminophen alone. So, so that improvement was significantly uh, significant. Um, and, and those changes, you know, were seen after three, uh, three months of administration of, of the product. Uh, then uh, regarding pain, uh, well, the, the pain um, uh, was assessed after the patient, you know, walked uh, like 30 meters, you know, in order to exacerbate the pain. Uh, and in that case, you know, the improvement in pain also was very important. Uh, was a, a three point out of a scale of, of 10, you know. Uh, usually in the literature uh, is described that 1.1 uh, improvement in, in pain is what it can be clinically, you know, uh, uh, significant. So in that case, you know, it was a, a triple uh, improvement. So uh, there was a, a 50 percent reduction in pain in the in the group that uh, acetaminophen and colaban uh, was taken after three months. Uh, then there's this this other study with um, with uh, 104 OA patients. There were patients that had uh, erosive uh, hand away, hand away, and also hip or or knee away. And that there was a mix of different types of, of osteoarthritis. And, and uh, in, in that study, uh, what we, we wanted to see, it was the, how was the, the progression of, of, uh, uh, of uh, the radiological osteoarthritis. So that's why the duration of the study was one year, 12 months. And, and also uh, to have uh, like a more objective uh, parameter to assess that. Also, we checked um, two, uh, two different biomarkers, eh? CTX1 and CTX2. Eh? Um, and, and, and this is what, what we're going to see right away. Here, we, we compared two different treatments, the treatment with glucosamine plus chondroitin sulfate, eh? compared to another treatment with those two ingredients, glucosamine plus chondroitin, and also, uh, Colaban uh, added in this in the, in that study. In both the studies, the the dosage of Colaban that was used it, were, uh, it was 40 milligrams. Eh? Uh, I think that that's important the the, the dosage because you know uh, compared to to what is the the hydrolyzed collagen that it's needed you know grams of the product in order to 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 have an anabolic effect, you know, in order to produce more collagen for, for the joint. In that case, uh, through that or, uh, mechanism of oral tolerance, the native collagen in doses very, very low, you know, an effect is seen. Eh? So, so then, you know, the, 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 the whole product that includes that ingredient, you know, the, 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 the tablets can be, you know, much more smaller. Um, so, well, uh, regarding the, 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 the parameters, um, uh, UCTX2 um, was uh, decreased uh, significantly, you know, uh, well, after six months and after uh, 12 months compared to, to the baseline uh, measures, you know, in the group that added the, the column. Um, but more important is the CTX2 because you know this this uh, biomarker is uh, related to the collagen type two and the degradation of collagen type two. So in that case, uh, what we saw is that uh, there was a, a, a reduction uh, important after six months uh, of the um, of the UCTX2, and then it was maintained after six plus months. So here th there's a, a, a there's a, a big difference compared to the glucosamine chondroitin sulfate group. And th there's a decrease as well after six months, but the next six months, you know, there's a, again an increase. So uh, Colaban here had an added effect, you know, maintaining the effects in, in those osteoarthritis patients. Oh, that reduction in markers was over a period of 
one year uh, of treatment. And then regarding the radiological score, um, uh, here what, what we saw is that uh, in the group with, uh, with a, uh, the native collagen, you know, the, the, progression, the progression of, of osteoarthritis, you know, uh, you know, tested with uh, the, the Kelvin and Lawrence uh, score, uh, increased a little bit, you know, through the year. But, you know, uh, compared to the uh, glucosamine chondroitin sulfate uh, group, the increase was much more steep eh? and, and the difference, you know, was significant. So in that case, we saw that the addition of native collagen can help slowing down the rate of increase of the radiological score. Thus, you know, Colaban N2, you know, could exert a cartilage protection in OA. Eh? Uh, I mean, you know better than me that OA is a chronic disease that cannot be cured. But, you know, here what we were looking forward is that we can reduce, you know, the pace of, of, of progression. Uh, so uh, to highlight the the, the the effects of this ingredient is that that acts by this unique mechanism of, of oral toler to tolerization, which which is nice because it, it completes the whole product of Niflex. Eh? The other ingredients uh, work uh, through uh, completely different mechanisms of action. So that's how it's a very holistic uh, product acting in different ways in osteoarthritis. It's a proven safe ingredient and well tolerated. Eh? Uh, the dose is very low, uh, uh, reduces joint discomfort, inflammation, and improves uh, joint function, um, offers uh, cartilage protection, uh, and we have seen that biomarkers like CTX1 and CTX2, you know, uh, are reduced. Thus, you know, there's a reduction on, on collagen degradation, and it's a product that is available in the EU, in the US, and in India. Uh, then the, the other ingredient uh, that I, I would like to talk about it is uh, the Mobili. Mobili is a, is a patented rooster comb extract. Eh? Is, is extracted for the, the, the rooster combs. Uh, that extract is naturally rich in hyaluronic acid, mainly. Then other polysaccharides, eh? it could be like chondroitin sulfate, heparin sulfate, dermatin sulfate. And then, then also there's a, around a 5% of collagen. So uh, uh, we have been able to patent this extract because uh, this unique composition has proven synergistic effect of the hyaluronic acid plus the other glycosaminoglycans plus the, the collagen. Eh? And, and we have seen in, in in vitro studies <coughs> that, that, um, that this um, hyaluronic acid from animal origin is more potent than uh, the hyaluronic acid from, from fermentation. Yeah. Also, uh, we have documented that uh, the hyaluronic acid uh, is absorbed. Yeah. Sometimes is is a, is a question that the doctors uh, have because you know usually the the, the, the chains of, of uh, hyaluronic acid I, are quite long, you know, and and then you know is more difficult to absorb than other molecules. Yeah. And the efficacy has been proven in multiple clinical trials. So uh, regarding the, the, the mechanism of action, uh, what, what we have seen is that, that, the hyaluron, that the hyaluronic acid is able to stimulate the endogenous uh, synthesis of hyaluronic acid. And, and here we, we, we have seen that the first difference uh, compared to the hyaluronic acid from fermentation. Yeah? Uh, here, that, 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 that increase in, in endogenous hyaluronic acid, you know, it was significantly higher than the one uh, from fermentation. Uh, then uh, this uh, mechanism of action uh, also is related to this reduction, uh, this anti-inflammatory effect, I'd say. Uh, in this in vitro study, uh, what we did, it was uh, we cultured uh, osteoarthritis, osteoarthritic 
synoviocytes with interleukin 1 beta, you know, to increase the inflammation. And then when mobili was added to the medium, you know, there was a, a, an important reduction of the, of the interleukin 1 beta, you know, that, that is, uh, that means that there's a reduction in inflammation and that, that, that then we will see in clinical trials. Uh, and also regarding the, the, the absorption uh, in an animal model uh, of uh, inverted gut sac, uh, what we saw is that, that we could confirm the intestinal absorption of the components of the mobili, eh? mainly in the duodenum uh, area of the intestine, but also in the jejunum in, and in the ileum. Eh? Um, then in, in other studies performed in rats and dogs, you know, uh, that, that hyaluronic acid could be given, you know, marked radioactively, you know, with, with technetium. We saw that this hyaluronic acid given orally, you know, arrived to connective tissue like skin and mainly to the joints. So that, that, that would be more of what, what I have said. So I, I move to, to the next one. So, uh, well, um, uh, what I want to point out or highlight here is that uh, synovitis is, uh, is a very important factor to uh, increase the progression of, of osteoarthritis. It has been described in many in many publication so in many publications so so uh, what it has been seen is that if the inflammation of the synovial membrane uh, is done then the progression of osteoarthritis is less and also there's a, a big reduction in pain eh? because mostly the pain that the OA patients have is because of the inflammation of the of the synovial membrane <laughs> and, and then, um, yeah, if you would excuse me, I'm sorry. Here I'm presenting you um, some uh, nutritional nutritional intervention studies with with healthy individuals, uh, where we gave uh, here a, a dose of, a dosage of 80 milligrams of mobili uh, per day. Um, in that study, after uh, three months of taking the mobili, there was an important reduction of the synovial effusion. Eh? So it's, it's uh, directly correlated to a reduction of the inflammation of the synovium compared to the placebo group. Um, in that same study, also, uh, it was checked uh, the, the muscle strength, eh? because, you know, if, if the, 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 the person, the, the, the patient with OA, if the muscle strength is good, you know, that helps, you know, in maintaining the, the joint, you know, in a healthier way. So uh, here what we saw is that uh, after giving mobility during three months, there was an, an important increase in muscle, in muscle strength. Uh, so, so this is helping, you know, in reducing, in slowing down the progression of, of osteoarthritis. Uh, regarding pain as well, um, uh, here we, we can see that after uh, two months of, of giving mobility, there was a significant reduction in pain, but at the third month, there was a very big reduction in, in pain compared to, to placebo. Um, <clears throat> also, in, in in one of those studies, what we wanted to, to see is if we could, you know, have like more objective data about uh, that reduction of the, the, the inflammation, okay? So, so what we did, it was a, a, a genomic uh, study, you know, uh, checking the, the gene expression. And, and, and well, and here I, I just put, you know, the, the, the four genes that, that we think that were the most important that we saw in that uh, gene expression study that, you know, that there was a, uh, an important difference, you know, uh, from the mobile group compared to the placebo group eh? with, with significant differences in the expression of those genes that they are directly related to the inflammation of the synovial membrane. 
Um, well, uh, in uh, this is what, what I, I explained to you before about the muscle strength. In that, that study, we, we saw that there was a, an increase in muscle strength of a 17%. So, so it was uh, quite important for, for those patients. So, so this, you know, that, that mobility supplementation significantly reduced synovial effusion and pain, reduced expression of OA biomarkers, and strengthened the, the muscles, you know, in order to maintain, you know, the joint in a healthier uh, way. So in, in, in other studies of... Um, three months, nine weeks, you know, uh, we could see uh, a reduction in the synovial effusion uh, significant, you know, uh, compared to the placebo group. Uh, also, the reduction in, in pain is, is, is quite uh, important, you know, a 50% in the, in the mobility group uh, after nine weeks of, of treatment uh, at, at this 80 milligrams per day dosage. Um, so, so well, um, uh, in all those studies, uh, we saw that Mobili is a very safe product, but also it's efficacy. Uh, it has a lot of efficacy, reducing pain intensity and reducing synovial effusion and synovial inflammation in patients with neosartrain. Uh, here, there's another study uh, where we checked uh, synovial effusion in, in patients uh, with osteoarthritis and with uh, synovitis, uh, obviously. But, but th this one also is important because, you know, it's a six-month duration. We compared uh, mobili to paracetamol or acetaminophen. So uh, we saw, you know, a significant difference between both treatments, you know, in favor of, uh, of mobility that has uh, a more anti-inflammatory profile than acetaminophen. And, and well, and, and also regarding the, the, the visual analog scale score uh, for pain, also the reduction in pain was uh, more uh, increased, you know, in the patients that were treated with mobility compared to those patients treated with acetaminophen. Yeah. After one, after two, after three, and after six months of treatment. Um, so, so well, uh, the, the highlights of Mobili, I'd say that it's, it's, a, it's a good ingredient to improve joint health, but also to improve muscle health that, you know, at the end will help, will help maintaining that joint health. Eh? And, and most of the patients with osteoarthritis is uh, our patients uh, which are quite old and also there's the problem of sarcopenia. Eh? So, so if we can also help with the muscle health, you know, it would be a plus for the product. So, well, it's a, it's a patented uh, ingredient, uh, stimulates the synobiocyte synthesis of hyaluronic acid, mainly through the reduction of the inflammation. Eh? If there's less inflammation in the synovial membrane, then the synobiocytes can work much better and they can do the, the, their job, which is the synthesized hyaluronic acid, you know, continuously to the synovial fluid. And, and well, and there's a documented uh, evidence, uh, you know, that, that this product is absorbed and, uh, and all, after that absorption, there's a, a reduction in, uh, of the symptoms of osteoarthritis. And, and well, and it's a product that is very, uh, it's very safe. It has been approved by the EFSA in Europe, you know, as a, a very safety product. And also in the US, you know, as a grass product, you know, that, that uh, this, you know, shows how safe is the product. Um, I thank you uh, very much for uh, your attention. I hope this uh, has been clear, but well, uh, also, uh, obviously, I'm open to any questions that uh, Dr. Mohanty, Dr. Harsh, or anybody from the audience might have.
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Roger, for a uh, lovely presentation, uh, emphasizing on uh, importance of mobility uh, and its ability to reduce synovial effusion and improving the muscle strength. And uh, yes, uh, the pain reduction being much greater with the use of mobility to the tune of about 17%. And also, it goes on to uh, reduce the expression of the biomarker genes uh, which are there. Uh, we will we'll have certainly uh, a few questions to you, especially uh, on the long-term safety, uh, which we didn't get to see, it, but we'll come to it uh, later. Uh, do stay with us. Uh, uh, before the QA session, we would like to quickly go on to Dr. Uh, S.S. Mohanty, uh, who is a professor at, uh, of orthopedic surgery at Kane Hospital. And uh, Dr. Mohanty, as ladies and gentlemen, I said earlier, will be deliberating on challenging cases, case studies in osteoarthritis management. Uh, with these words, uh, it is over to you, Dr. Mohanty. Thank you, Dr. Hurs. Uh, I'll just uh, share my screen. And uh, that was an uh, elegant lecture by <coughs> Roger, uh, highlighting about the, you know, on denatured collagen type two, as well as the mobility and uh, how it uh, helps uh, to <coughs> in osteoarthritis. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, quickly go through the osteoarthritis of the knee for the benefit of both surgeons and uh, then show two cases uh, after that where we'll discuss about and then we'll have some question answers. So thank you, Paul Sparma, for giving me this opportunity. So what is osteoarthritis? You know, sometimes we see so many cases, but we don't know what is osteoarthritis. How does it happen? It is the disease due to uncoupling of balance between the cartilage degeneration and regeneration. As you know that uh, for the benefit of our uh, orthopedic colleagues, that uh, when, our, uh, when we take bath and we go or grow, there's every day some amount of cells are dying in our body and some, some amounts of cells are uh, there is forming, there is formation and dying out of the cells. But uh, the rate of uh, regeneration or formation of the cells is more compared to rate of dying out of the cells or degeneration of the cells uh, in the initial part of our life till we achieve you know, 30 to 40 years of age. And after that, what happened? The process of degeneration takes place. And that's why uh, the more of dying out of the cells and then the formation of the cells, and hence, gradually you grow old, and finally, there are so many, many cells if degenerates, then gradually we achieved a death. So, if there is an uncoupling of this balance, then it leads to more degeneration of the cartilage uh, degeneration, and that leads to osteoarthritis. And it is characterized by focal loss of cartilage with uh, some bone response, periarticular reactive bone response. And clinically, the patient presents uh, a joint pain and some amount of crepitus in the joint or sound coming from the joint. And uh, radiologically, if you do X-ray, you'll find the joint space is reduced. There will be osteophytes and variety of uh, deformities one will see. So this is the common presentation of uh, osteoarthritis of the knee. Both these are affected. Most common disease which is affecting the human joints. This osteoarthritis doesn't happen in animals because of, you know, they have a four-legged uh, uh, animal. So because of our bipedal nature, probably we have to pay a price and that price uh, God has given us to develop osteoarthritis. And this is the second most rheumatological problem next to soft tissue rheumatism. Soft tissue rheumatism means you must be seeing in the OPDs like, you know, tennis elbow, all the decurvance disease, all these things are known as soft tissue rheumatism. So osteoarthritis becomes the second most uh, rheumatological problem next to this, all the soft tissue rheumatism and most common medical disorder of adult patient. That means beyond 40, 50 years, you see this is common. The risk factors, usually, as I told you, that uh, as we increase our age, female gender, females affect, uh, get affected more compared to the males. Obesity, when your weight is more, then you put more weight on the joints and uh, that uh, leads to earlier degeneration of the joint or arthritis. Now, smokers, something to be happy about that non-smoking uh, is a, a risk factor uh, for development of arthritis, but how is it related is not very clear. 
but probably smoking leads to more of osteoporosis and osteoporosis is a protective factor for development of osteoarthritis and that is why probably you know smokers uh, develop less of osteoarthritis occupational knee bending physical labor and certain conditions like chondrocalcinosis calcium deposition in the joint at least to earlier development of arthritis <clears throat> and as i told you protective factors are smoking osteoporosis and weight reduction the people who are less in weight they uh, the less incidence of osteoarthritis compared to overweight people or obese people now what is the pathogenesis there are two important triggering factors one is biomechanical and second is biochemical so biomechanical means the it starts with a microfracture of subchondral bone that means uh, whether due to repeated uh, stressful activities or uh, due to sporting events there might be a microfracture of subchondral bone or a fatigue fracture of collagen fibers as your age grows so because of fatty fracture or the microfracture of subchondral bone the whole series of events starts that leads to osteoarthritis i'll tell you in the next part of my slide and biochemical factors uh, is primarily release of certain proteolytic enzymes which help to you know destruction of the cartilage so whether this biochemical or biomechanical factors that leads to activation of the tissue plasminogen activator that is something is present in the joint and that activates the plas plasminogen to plasmin and this plasmin is very notorious and uh, what happens uh, the inactive metax metal matrix proteinase which is there in the cartilage it activates the active metal matrix proteinase so this active metal matrix proteinase is very detrimental to cartilage that leads to degeneration of the cartilage and leads to what is known as arthritis and when the cartilage degeneration starts as roger was showing in his slides that um, because of cartilage particles they are floating in the joint that leads to be recognized by the our immune system and uh, t4 cells they come into the picture and these wear particles they uh, they cause further inflammation in the joint because of the activation of this immune system and that leads to you know what is known as osteoarthritis that is degeneration of the cartilage along with uh, inflammation in the joint or what is known as synovitis so this is how our normal cartilage looks like if you take a section of the joint and uh, early stages the cartilage becomes little fiber like so there are you know fibers as you can see in the hairy cartilage and as the disease advances little bit then flakes of cartilage they come out of the subchondral bone and uh, floats inside the joint so this uh, acts like a loose body so here it gives rise to crepitus in the joint or when the joint you hear certain sounds and the uh, subchondral bone is uh, uh, exposed or when the subchondral bone is exposed so there are nerve fibers there because cartilage doesn't have any nerve supply blood supply or lymphatic supply so normally it is not painful when the cartilage is covered but when the cartilage goes up subchondral bone is affected uh, exposed there is the nerve supply to the bone there is a blood supply and there is a lymphatic supply that's why it becomes painful and end stage when all the cartilage goes up what is known as a bald bone which is exposed and here uh, it is becomes very painful and certain deformities develop and once as you know the cartilage goes out it goes for a lifetime it doesn't come back and hence we get pain now this is how a normal joint cut surface looks like because of the cartilage covering it looks so smooth but here the cartilage has degenerated and that's why subchondral bone is exposed and it uh, it is painful so there is classification of osteoarthritis that there are three varieties of osteoarthritis the first one is a nodal generalized osteoarthritis which is familial that means genetical predisposition is there and normally you see the hand joints are affected and if you see if, uh, any patient coming with a nodules in the distal interphalangeal joint or proximal interphalangeal joints in the hand joints that means it is a nodal generalized osteoarthritis the second variety is a erosive osteoarthritis when the interphalangeal joint that means the hand joints represent with florid inflammation and erosive changes that means uh, there are swelling and it is very painful that means there is acute synovitis and the third which is the commonest variety we see in our opd is isolated large joint arthritis that is a knee joint arthritis you see the patients with the bone knee deformity like this and sometimes the bone knee increases size and it becomes a o like of, you know in the in between two legs 
and finally there is a secondary osteoarthritis which is due to any disease process in the joint like rheumatoid arthritis or any post trauma following fracture or anything malalignment of the joint or any other condition that may lead to arthritis that known as a secondary osteoarthritis but the all the age related arthritis are known as primary osteoarthritis or isolated large joint osteoarthritis so clinical features these are usually the gradually onset of the symptoms are usually asymmetric and pain occurs due to increased joint use and it decreases with the rest initially what happens uh, <clears throat> suppose a person gets up from the chair after prolonged rest he gets a sudden catch in the joint that is known as a galling or or what is known as stiffness after a period of inactivity and gradually if you examine there will be de deformity there will be bony swellings if you palpate there will be if palpate the bony swellings there will be muscle weakness or wasting of the muscles there will be effusion in the joint or swelling in the joint and there will be crepitus in the joint and there will be restrictor restriction of the movements next when the patient comes to the opd we ask for a x ray and if you see in the x ray there is a joint space narrowing of the joint space or here it is uh, almost the bones are touching each other the narrowing of the joint space is the earliest sign in the x ray to tell you that it is osteoarthritis there may be osteophyte subchondral cyst deformity of various deformity loose bodies and calcification in the joint as well so this is a grading of osteoarthritis that uh, grade 1 to grade 5 this is all back grading very old grading uh, way back in 60s 70s this 70s this grading has been done so depending upon that how much joint space is reduced so it is earliest uh, grade one then little less then little less and gradually the whole joint space is entirely gone that is known as grade 5 arthritis usually grade 3 4 and 5 that uh, those conditions requires operative treatment and usually grade 1 and 2 here the medical treatment is helpful so conservative treatment what we do we do patient education like you know reduce your weight do physical therapy do range of motion strengthening uh, exercises sometimes we tell the patient to hold a stick of course so many patient they don't like to hold a stick because they will uh, others will feel that they are dependent uh, on the stick they have become old so they don't like but still we can advise to use the ambulation aids like stick so that that you know shares the weight of the body so less weight falls on the joint and hence joint becomes less painful occupational therapy like joint protection and energy conservation like assistive devices in activities of daily living you increase the height of the toilet seat so that your knee doesn't bend much and doesn't become less painful and like this in the car if your right knee uh, left knee is very painful then you can uh, you know sit in the car from the left side so and enter the car or else you can do on the opposite side so that uh, that prevents the you know more knee bending you can tell the patient to avoid uh, activities of uh, you know ground level activities like sitting squatting sitting cross legged sitting on the floor because those are the things which uh, aggravates the osteoarthritis next comes the drug therapy there are you know four groups of drug first group is a symptom modifying agents like nsaids what we tell commonly pain killers so when the patient comes first we give a pain killer like nsaid we can give narcotic analgesic or non opioid analgesics as well and uh, next we give you know drugs for inflammation like nsaids intraarticular uh, steroids are given and drugs for inflammation colchicine is also a you know a strong drug for reduce the inflammation the third group is disease modifying agents and uh, the drugs which decrease the degrade degeneration of the in osteoarthritis is the like the matrix metalloproteinase inhibition that which causes uh, destruction of the cartilage doxycycline collagen as inhibitors like glycosamine glycan elastase inhibitor like pentosan polysulfate antiplasmin activator like pranexamic acid so as i told you in the pathogenesis of osteoarthritis so in various steps these medicines they act and uh, that decreases the degeneration of the joint the second group is a increase regeneration like growth factors chondrocyte transplant or here the nutrient supplement like glucosamine chondroitin sulfate and here our knee flex comes into this group to which increases the regeneration of the cartilage and comes in the nutrient supplement or what is known as nutraceuticals in this group the knee flex comes into 
factors so it's a combination of glucosamine chondroitin and other substances which uh, you know on denatured collagen type 2 and mobilin what uh, roger was uh, trying to highlight the third group is a visco supplementation you can give intraarticular injections into the joint uh, like a hyaluronic acid uh, locally acting and finally uh, the last group is a miscellaneous group where intraarticular injection of artificial cyanuric fluid to increase or improve lubrication inside the joint that is given certain newer braces which has come uh, you know unilodal brace that means it uploads the uh, uh, weight on the medial side goes to the lateral side the braces are uh, how much it's effective i don't know but uh, definitely the braces has become very expensive and uh, still people buy them and use them but of no use then the surgical management comes you can do arthroscopy debridement high tibial osteotomy unicompartmental arthroplasty or a total knee replacement these are the surgeries for osteoarthritis today the role of arthroscopy in uh, you know uh, early osteoarthritis knee is very limited unless there is a loose body or there are some uh, meniscus tear degenerative meniscus tear which is causing pain if you one can so then one can uh, uh, balance the meniscus there or else one can do a debridement of the joint or cartilage debridement but now it is the role of uh, arthroscopic lavas is very limited so only this specific purposes you know two three conditions only in you know, arthroscopy is done cartilage transplantation mosaic plasty is still at the experimental stage where the cartilage is implanted inside the joint but uh, it's not very commonly used in uh, routine clinical practice osteotomy is the very limited indication one must remember that if the there is a unique compartmental disease varus or valgus and uh, the deformity is only very mild less than 15 degree and the patient has got a good range of movement then osteotomy is indicated this is a old age osteotomy close age osteotomy where uh, you know you put a stapler there uh, it was being used but nowadays now newer newer plates has come most preferable way is now to do a open wage osteotomy and uh, to put the plates which has been very useful and some people use uh, you know external fixators uh, also in his osteotomy and elisir of fixators now unique compartmental arthroplasty is limited uh, to patients who are more than 60 years with a low activity level where the weight is less and flexion with more 90 more than 90 protection and of course limited you know virus valgus uh, deformity like less than 15 degree in those kind of cases you need in compartmental knee arthroplasty is done and finally the answer is a total knee replacement when there is a grade 4 or grade 5 all back uh, osteoarthritis then total knee replacement is done which relieves pain which provides mobility provides stability and corrects the deformity that is the final answer in osteoarthritis management this is one of the patient where the total knee replacement has been done this is how the post operative x ray looks like so these are the couple of patient like 62 years old female severe varus deformity just 6 months post op how the deformity is uh, corrected the bent knees or you know uh, varus knees which has been corrected and it has become straight these are the post operative x ray and this is how a severe virus deformity, we tell it's a O deformity, that means a O formation between both the knees, both the knee, the bent knees, and that is how the correction is achieved after the surgery. And this is a high flexion knee, nowadays newer implant has come, which allows the patient uh, to sit cross-legged on the floor and do ground level activities, especially in Asian countries and in our country, India as well. So to tell that most painful replacements are because of infection inoculated during surgery, but if you're looking at 10 years, 20 years down the line, careful attention to the technique and quality of implant can make the difference between successful symptomatic and failed total joint replacements. Finally, I'll show you the two cases, the end, end of my lecture. This is 63 years old female. As you can see here, very bad knee looking knees she is walking like this complaining of pain but if you see the x-ray it shows that joint space is pretty well maintained and there is no osteophytes no subcondral cysts etc so these are the this is the 
group of patient, this is early arthritis, though the patient symptoms are there, but X-ray is not matching. Let me X-ray shows there is early osteoarthritis. Okay, so these are the patient we don't operate. It has to be treated. This is grade uh, one to grade two in you know, all back osteoarthritis. These are the patient who are going to benefit from conservative treatment like knee flex or what you give glucosamine, conducting along with one denatured collagen type two and mobilin. So these are the medicines which have helped in this kind of patients. Whereas another patient, 53 years, case number two, 53 years old male, gradually progressing knee deformity, inable to walk properly. Though the patient is younger, but uh, you know the knee deformity is much more. This is how he walks uh, bilateral knee fusion with gross instability. There is tenderness, but there is no neurological deficit. He walks with a stick, very bad knees. So these are the patient, if you see the x-rays that gradually, this is the x-ray in 98, 99, 2000, 2004, and 2008. How the arthritis has progressed over the period of years from 98 till 2008, that means in this 10 years, that how it has progressed. In the earlier part, your medical treatment would help, but when it reaches at this stage, when joint has become unstable, then probably surgical treatment is the treatment of choice. This is how the right knee, you know, lateral view. And this is the left knee AP view, how in 99, 2001, 2002, and again in 2008, joint has subluxated there. And that is the lateral view of the knee of this, uh, this patient, 53 years old male. So it was treated with a total knee orthoplasty where you had to put the graft in the in a bone defect and put a stem extender. And these are the post of X-rays. And that is the eight year follow up probably in 2016 or something like that. These are the X-rays, which shows the alignment is restored and uh, pain is reduced and joint function is restored and is a happier outcome. This is a follow up function of this patient. That is the range of movement and that is how he's working in the follow up. So I finished my case presentation. These are my hospital attachment, Nanavati, Jasko, and KM hospital. And before we start on the discussion, I take the liberty of just uh, you know appealing to those who are members of Indian Orthopedic Association. This year, I'm contesting for the post of vice president of Indian Orthopedic Association. The elections are scheduled in November 1st to November 21st. And I request all of you to support, uh, you know, for my candidature and do online votings. I've been past president of Indian Orthoplasty Association, past president of Bombay Orthopedic Surgeons Association, and past fellowship chair and education chair of Indian Society of Hip and Knee Surgeons. I thank you for a patient hearing. If you have any questions, we can discuss, and uh, you can later on, if you have any questions, you can email me in this email ID, drssmanthi at hotmail.com. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Mohanty, for a very lucid uh, talk uh, on osteoarthritis, its management, and especially the cases you have shared towards the end of the thing. Uh, coming back uh, to where we started, uh, one of the very first question and the first the question which has been you know uh, coming in my mind, uh, we have talked about you know there are an array of treatments available, whether it's the drug therapies uh, to begin with all sorts of NSAIDs and opiates or opioids and uh, paracetamol, of course. And uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, those uh, 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 nutraceuticals, I would like to call, uh, you know, MSM and other things uh, which are there. And then going over to uh, when uh, these are not managed and going over to the intraarticular injections and then eventually to the, the replacement surgeries. Where in this all spectrum of drugs, where do you see knee flex to be falling in? Uh, I'm trying to understand what uh, place do you accord to this combination uh, in this alum material? Let's say therapy, I must say. That's what I'm trying to ask. You're asking me or Richard? Yes, to you. Okay. <laughs> so, Ajay. Told you, you know, whenever the patient has got a knee pain, first he consults a general practitioner. Yeah. And uh, general practitioner first starts with an NSAID, you know, commonly known as painkillers and some kind of local heat, uh, some 
you know medications but it becomes uh, suppose it doesn't become all right then he refers to an orthopedic surgeon or a rheumatologist so this early arthritis where then orthopedic surgeon when the patient comes to our opd then first we advise an x ray to see that in what stage is our arthritis is there and in if you see the joint space is slightly reduced but not completely the bones are not touching each other that means it is not bone and bone arthritis and there is still cartilage is left so that is the you know stage where i am looking towards the using knee flex where it will be extremely useful so it gives some amount of nsaid for a couple of days say about 5 uh, uh, days to 7 days or so to take part of the initial pain but uh, knee flex is supposed to take over and uh, to whatever you know that will be helpful for that uh, those kind of arthritis so all back staging which i showed you stage 1 and stage 2 maybe some patients in stage 3 these are the patient where i would uh, prescribe them with this uh, kind of medications the second so thing the okay. second thing is that uh, sometimes even in uh, advanced stages the patient uh, where you know surgery is indicated patient may not be mentally or psychologically prepared for the surgery in those kind of cases sometimes we prescribe so that uh, it will take care of you know still he is mentally prepared or psychologically satisfied for surgery in those kind of cases it can be required also so uh, what i gather is uh, very early stages uh, when the patient comes uh, with the complaint and uh, the narrowing of the joint space has not taken place to a very significant extent yeah so the idea is uh, we begin with then said and we combine an inflex to it and gradually over a period of the next few days we taper down uh, the inset uh, requirement and right. uh, process with the knee flex you know yeah yeah that is what i got and how uh, how long what it remains how long you will persist with the uh, knee flex is it uh, the reemergence of uh, a greater pain or you look at radiological progression or how do you decide that when when to move on from it or when to add on to it you know the usual assessment is a clinical assessment hmm. you may not find a radiological improvement because once uh, the amount of cartilage which is destroyed that that will not come back it will not improve the joint space whatever yes. mild reduction in the joint space that is good enough so normally we don't advise x rays for this patient as a follow up x rays so what we do we, we prescribe and then we call the patient after about a month for follow up and that time we assess the patient's pain and what about activities daily living and sometimes also we ask second question that did you have to take any painkiller medication during the last one month after you stopped that initial painkiller that means after 5 to 7 days if you have stopped the painkiller medication whether you had any breakthrough pain in between that is you yeah, yes yeah yeah if the did you have to take any nsaid so mm. that gives us an assessment that uh, how, whether the patient has improved or still having pain usual you know our treatment would be i would recommend is about 2 to 3 months but uh, usually it should show the you know improvement after a month's uh, treatment some medication yeah that, that's what i also gathered uh, when uh, uh, roger was talking to us yeah. that uh, we get a more profound reduction in pain though we start getting it early on but the reductions are more profound in pain uh, around uh, second month of the treatment is that so roger Uh, yes it is uh, the 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 thing is that uh knee flex you know contains other ingredients like the 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 boswellia that that recent studies uh, we have seen that that uh, the onset of action is pretty quick uh, five seven days you can see you know an improvement in in pain okay? uh mobili colaban those ingredients um i i'd say that they are a little bit more for for long term management of osteoarthritis they need a few weeks and sometimes 2 3 4 weeks to uh to get to the maximum efficacy level and for example colaban because through the oral toler tolerization you know it needs you know some days 
in order to inform the immune system to stop attacking the collagen type 2, for example. And, and the same thing happens with the hyaluronic acid, you know, is absorbed in the intestine, but until it gets uh, in enough quantity to the, to the joint, you know, it needs this like two, three weeks, you know, to start reducing the inflammation. So, so this is what I, what I explained of the two ingredients from Bioiberica, but the other ingredients that Niflex contains, you know, the Boswellia and the curcumin, you know, the, the effect is, uh, is faster in that case. So, so I think that it's, it's a very complete uh, product because, you know, it, it has different approaches to the symptomatology of osteoarthritis uh, without, you know, uh, without not taking care, you know, of the progression. Uh, well, uh, yes, uh, yeah, as you mentioned in your talk uh, on sinuitis, yes, uh, Dr. Monty has a question to you. I think I'll yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Monty no, no, first. Yes. It is just Go ahead, a, sir. Go ahead, sir. It is, it's a lemon question. You know, yeah. this uh, mobilin is extracted from the rooster comb, you know, yes. that uh, material. You know, sometimes we feel it may, there may be some allergy or hypersensitive reaction to the rooster comb extracts. Uh, uh, is there any incidence of allergy with this or uh, 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 no? Extract? But but uh, I mean, uh, we are not uh, aware of, of of problems or of allergy that that patients uh, have had. But you are right. I mean, patients that that have allergies to mm, chicken, you know, they they might you know be alert if taking. The, a product with with mobili because of course is not a, a, a an extract of pure hyaluronic acid no in that case you know still there could be some um, rest of protein from avian origin from from chicken that that could that, that could uh, give them uh, a problem the, the other thing is that the, the the dosage is not very high those 80 milligrams is not a, a, a very high dose. So if, if there's a, a, an allergy reaction, it, it shouldn't be very uh, important. At least for, uh, for the feedback that we have, eh? uh, th th there are, uh, we have not had problems and this product has been in the market th since 2004 eh? in, in the global markets. We, we have so it's been in use for since 2004, and uh, yes. there have not been uh, any hypersensitivity kind of reaction, allergy reactions that have been reported. Uh, but uh, what about other side effects? I've seen that. Uh, now that I, I have two questions to you coming to you. One is uh, I've seen that with collagen into uh, the studies have of uh, years duration. Uh, that's number one. What you had shown uh, with that in combination with the uh, glucosamine and uh, chondroitin and yes. the second thing but on the second uh, on the other hand i see when you talked about uh, mobili i think uh, your maximum duration of study was about 12 weeks uh, uh, six months six with, months with okay. yes so okay six months now there are two things uh, is uh, uh, for how long you have because I, I believe the studies we are presenting would be slightly older and since then uh, there would have been the extensions of the study and a longer longer duration usage data would be available. So any side effects uh, which have been seen, uh, either initial in therapy or over a period of time, that's number one. And what is the longest uh, use that uh, you have documented uh, with the use of these two ingredients? Um, okay. Uh, well, re regarding the, 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 the longest use, uh, I mean, for Colaban is what, what you said, said Dr. Harsh, is a 12 month or one year uh, duration, you know, uh, continuously. And uh, regarding the, the mobility is a six month uh, duration. I mean, um, we know that, uh, that hyaluronic acid, you know, is a very safe product you know that's that's why it has been approved by the EFSA mm. in Europe and for the FDA as a grass in, in the US because of the, the the history of safety and because of, of the of the studies of, of toxicity of, of the product but uh, I mean more than the feedback from doctors you know and even 
uh, veterinarians that they are using that that, that those ingredients also for, for dogs and and cats for for a long periods of time you know uh, that what we can you know assure by uh, clinical trials in in mobile is six months okay uh, fair enough because I know long run clinical trials are not very easy also and uh, to execute and uh, they're very cost intensive also so it's not really I will come back to you on this point, uh, Professor Mohanty. I'm sure uh, you would have used uh, Netflix in some of your patients. Uh, uh, and uh, what about uh, any side effects? They have uh, complained of uh, any issues with the compliance uh, with the combination in your patients? Not yet, not yet, actually. Uh, we have used in many patients, and uh, uh, sometimes they ask, What is the side effects? I tell them, you know, this is like a supplement to the food. It's like a joint vitamin. You can tell this. And uh, usually there's no side effects uh, with the vitamin. So you can take the as long as uh, you can, uh, you know, you can, you can, you should take. The only, yeah. only compliance issue which I have found, the patient asked that, you know, uh, Roger, that in our country, many, many people are vegetarians. <laughs> so they ask uh, whether it contains any non-vegetarian, which uh, they don't like to take. Uh, there are religious issues and all these things. So that whether it contains any non-vegetarian thing, or uh, that we tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you, is you the only right. compliance issues uh, in our country. <laughs> uh, I see. So, I don't know. Do they deter still? They think about it if you tell them that uh, yes, this is a non vegetarian source, uh, they are reluctant, they are skeptical to take it. Or uh, they take it and try and move on. Uh, there, there, you know, there is some staunch uh, Jain yes. people yes. who would not like yes. to take. But uh, yeah. it is my way of explaining that, you know, when you are a patient, you are exempted from everything. Uh, when a patient is admitted to a hospital, you know, he's exempted from fasting and all these things from religious fasting, whatever you take. The God uh, will understand and uh, we're exempted from that. So that is how I explain. So they don't uh, take it otherwise. So you can take it as a medication and medication may contain anything, you know, any extracts from anywhere. Don't worry about that. How long? Thank you so much for that. Uh, so uh, how long do you visualize? Uh, a patient uh, using this combination. Obviously, I understand that uh, that disease on the depends on the disease progression. That depends on many aspects. But then, generally, uh, how long you see that uh, patient will continue to achieve, uh, you know, relief with the with the use uh, of this uh, combination. You know, initially, what I prescribe is uh, that. Uh, you take it for three months. I tell them, okay. you take it three months to get an effect. The maximum effect will come at three months. But you come for a follow-up after one month. So that uh, I'll see and then further tell you to continue with it. So after one month, after assessment, then I tell them that you come after two months again. So my first follow-up is in first month. Second follow-up is three months. And by three months, at the end of the year, maximum, say, maybe 70-80% patient, they get an improvement. So they're happy with it. And I tell them that you continue with it, uh, uh, one tablet per day, uh, continue with it, uh, then you show me after three months. So if the patients are all right, they don't come for follow-up or else they have stopped the medication of their own. So maybe because of the economical issues or something or uh, taking a medication every day doesn't suit them. So they stop. And again, if they get a pain or anything, when they're symptomatic, then they will come for a follow-up. Otherwise, they don't turn up. That is how it happens. So, uh, in a sense, what I gather uh, from your thoughts, uh, Dr. Moenthi and uh, Roger, it's, it's a fairly safe combination, uh, which can very, be, very well be used in the very initial uh, stages of the disease and can has a scope or is, can be considered as a first-line uh, agent, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, though uh, the, the onset uh, of the uh, effect or the benefit is not right from the first dose. Yes, it may take five to seven days for it to manifest. Uh, so it would be worthwhile to have the patients initially on an NSAID or whatever is uh, uh, analgesic medication uh, we are looking at. And, and then gradually, 
after six or seven days of usage, it can be uh, tapered down and done away with, depending on how the patient uh, is responding to it. And uh, the combination is fairly safe. And as uh, uh, Roger has uh, spoken about that uh, Colavent N2, we have the data of usage of uh, almost a year uh, in patients with osteoarthritis and uh, with mobility up to six months. And uh, there are no causes to worry, and there have not been any uh, reports of any hypersensitivity reaction. So therefore, it's a it's a very safe one, and it's a very uh, it's the right combination, I would say, for the very initial usage when the patient comes with the complaint of osteoarthritis. Uh, are there any questions uh, from the audience? If you can uh, share, like I'm asking my colleagues, because I I do not have. Uh, Punam, Punam, or no. Punam, is there any questions from the audience? Uh, if there are any questions, somebody can help me because I don't see it here uh, in my chat box. Uh, I have a question for Roger. Yes, uh, please go ahead. Sir. Yeah. Uh, Roger, is the combination is more effective or any monotherapy? Suppose one of it or we give or something like that. Will it be helpful or if the combination has got some synergistic effect which is helpful? Um, yes, I, I think that the, the combination has a, a synergistic effect. Uh, for example, uh, regarding the, 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 the studies that I, I talked about, that there was a, a study that we used a product with chondroitin sulfate glucosamine, but also mobile in it. Uh, and then that product, when we added Colaman N2, then offered uh, a better protect, pro, uh, protection to, to the cartilage degradation. And we saw in, in that animal model in, in rabbits. So, so based on that, I, I, I'd say that the, the combination of the ingredients, you know, it gives a, a synergistic effect. So I, I think that it's better to, to, to take that, that product of combined ingredients rather than, for example, Colavant N2 uh, alone. Any question, Roger, you have for Dr. Monty? Yeah. Uh, you are entitled to ask one. Go ahead. Uh, no, okay, any, anything, okay. Anything. <laughs> well, the, the question that I had, uh, I think that, that he already responded. I, I wanted to, to, to ask him, you know, for how long, you know, uh, you, you, Dr. Mohanty, wait for a patient, you know, to, to see if there's an improvement uh, after uh, that patient is taking uh, Niflex. So you, you said, you know, I, I think I understood between one month and three months, you know, see if, if after that period of time, if there's no improvement, probably is not uh, a responder, right? Yeah. So a good question that, uh, you know, as I told you that on the, at the end of first month, I called them to have an assessment. I asked them what percentage you are better, whether 10%, 20%, 30%, you know, some patients are really, they tell more than 50%. If more than 50% improvement, then uh, I feel it's a good uh, response. If they tell, okay, 10%, 20%, then I tell them, okay, maximum effect will come uh, at the end of three months and you continue taking it. And of course, I tell them that along with that, uh, you have to do your exercises, you have to do the muscle strengthening exercises, you have to you know, avoid those the ground level activities like uh, sitting cross legged. Many of our patients they do ground level activities, sitting cross legged, squatting. You know, uh, many people have got Indian type of uh, toilets, uh, so they use them. I tell them that you change over to a Western type of commode type of toilet and all these things. And at the end of three months, I have my second assessment. If that time the patient tells that. Uh, if I have got I have got an improvement more than 50%, say 70%, 80%, then okay, you continue with it. But at that point of time, if the patient tells that uh, no, I didn't have much of improvement, I got hardly 10%, 20%, then that is I take I take it as a, as a non responder. Then I you know my um, advise them that I will try particular injection or something like that. Okay. Interesting. Uh, this this makes me gives me an idea. How many in your uh, practice uh, you have been um, using? I believe you have been using it for quite a while now. Uh, how many? What proportion would be the non-responders? Uh, 
Any thoughts on yeah. any idea? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you that. You know, I'll tell you what the literature says. The American mm-hmm. Academy for Orthopedic Surgeons, their um, their the consensus statement, which is there, published in 2013, published in 2015. That mm. uh, nutraceuticals are not uh, effective uh, in osteoarthritis. They, they have their opinion, but in practice, what I see that is very much effective, and almost I would tell seventy percent to eighty percent of patients that it has been effective. Um, maybe you know around twenty percent patients may not be effective, but uh, at least seventy percent. Well, that's why any patient comes in coming with uh, arthritis. You know, early arthritis, I start with uh, this uh, combination therapy and uh, and 70-80 percent, they are happy with that. And even if I told you, little advanced stages, those patients were, uh, you know, indicated for surgical intervention. And what most of the patients, when you tell, you know, first uh, instance that you require surgery, they don't agree immediately. But they're not ready for surgery. They have not come mentally prepared for the surgery. So in those cases, I treat them, and that gives me, you know, satisfaction that I have given some treatment, medical treatment, and if it doesn't work, then we'll go for surgery. So within this uh, one month or two months, whatever, if they don't get all that, this becomes a, you know, time for their mental preparation for surgery. Then they come back, okay, it didn't work, so let me go for surgery. So that is how also I treat this kind of, and even in advanced stages, those are not mentally prepared, I treat them. And 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 maybe about say three four percent of those patients also they feel better whether it is a you know placebo effect or something like that they feel better okay we are feeling better okay you continue with it then if you are feeling better and when you are deteriorated you can come back you can always do surgery anytime no that's very important sir because uh, whatever works and whatever you know does away because suddenly uh, patient uh, you know who's likely to be or deciding is in a deciding mode, uh, you know. So it requires that that kind of a support and help until the patient makes up uh, his or her mind uh, yeah. on going going ahead with it. Um, yeah. That's a very important aspect that you have uh, brought in here. And um, any questions, ladies and gentlemen, uh, either from uh, Professor Mohanty or Roger, uh, uh, before we close in, uh, Poonam from Ortho TV, if you can help us, if there are any questions, please let us know. And uh, Sir, there is you... no question from Ortho TV. No, 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 from the audience. Yes, sir, I from audience. Uh, uh, for... Okay, there is... fair enough. Fair enough. So I, I believe the, the talk has been very well understood, everybody, and uh, uh, all the doubts have been uh, uh, cleared uh, by both Roger and Professor Monty. So it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for me to uh, you, take you back to the, uh, give you back to the studio. And uh, before I do that, uh, for uh, Dr. Monty, a very enlightening and, uh, and a lovely talk. Uh, thank you so very much for uh, having accepted our request and given us the time. And R- Roger, it was, it was a learning experience. There are facets uh, to these ingredients, you know, and especially uh, when they are working at a very molecular kind of a level. Many of us are not very conversant with them. And uh, thank you for uh, joining us and enlightening us on those aspects of uh, both color identity and uh, mobility. There is in mind with this, these words, uh, this is Dr. Ashutvedi signing you off on behalf of uh, our speakers, organizers, and the Pulse Pharmaceuticals. Thank you so very much. And uh, take care. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haas. Thank yeah. you, Roger. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. Thank you very much. Well, thank you much. Thank you, Roger. It was nice. Sometime I'll come, sir. Bombay, come down and I'll bother you. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. Meet Sounds good. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was sometime a very favorite hunting ground for me. <laughs> and then I was